watching this. All right. So first and foremost, um, about reviews, um, I will get you your, you know how we do the evaluations. You will get it. I'm running a little bit behind on my evaluations, but don't worry. Um, I will make sure that you get your evaluations and, um, I mean, everyone obviously has done really well um, for, I do my evaluation. There's Rosa. Um, and then- I'm here. I know you're here. Was your little one acting up? <laughs> That's what I was guessing. No, I was doing so- I was making something to eat for my son. Sorry. Oh, no, no. See, I, but was it kind of right? I said, it's got to be something with the child. It's morning. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we just started. Um, so- um, Oh, evaluation. So you will get your evals uh, before the, before the end of the semester is over. And cause I, I do take them serious. I don't just write good job, you know, you know and, and I actually feel that you deserve that recognition. Um, oops, sorry. I think I just did something to you, Rosa. I pressed a button. There you go. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So on the last day, normally, well, we're going to do it. Um, it's going to look like, oh my God, we're going to be here forever. It doesn't take that long. But unfortunately, because of spring break, we didn't really get a lot of time. Of course, you all know that I love addiction. So that's like my main thing that I love to talk about. And that's the one thing we didn't really get a chance to do. But the last day I find so important to kind of put everything together. And we have, I know a couple gaps. So there's going to be some things that we're not going to know. Basically, we're not playing Jeopardy. So I'll just show you basically, we're not playing it. We're just using it as a format because if we played it, it would take forever. And I don't think any of you have forever. <laughs> um, you have homework and lots of stuff to do. Also, you guys noticed um, that movie that I gave you. I tried so hard to make it download on Zoom. I'm still working on it so that I can, I bought it for the class. Um, so if you want to rent it or if you have Prime, it's actually free it's much more fun to watch it that way. And it's actually a really good movie. Like if you want to watch it like on Friday night with your significant other, or just, I mean, it's a really, really, really good movie. And mo most people will just end up enjoying it. And they're like, oh my God, I forgot to even do the assignment. And then they can go back and pick someone. So um, that's on due till Sunday. I'm giving you, of course, that extra time because that's, I want you to enjoy the video. Um, Otherwise you have to watch it in those pieces because I was unable to figure it out. Um, I have to rearrange my, what's that thing called? Uh, not Zoom, but um, YouTube to make it longer for my new computer. So I apologize about that. It's kind of annoying. So hopefully it's like three or four bucks, I think to rent. Um, otherwise uh, you can just watch it in the little pieces. So has anyone seen it before? What's it called? I always forget. Oh. Um, Girl, girl interrupted thank you girl interrupted yeah with angelina i've seen it i love it i've seen it yeah it's i've seen good, it right it's so good and it depicts so this is very different than the one that marcia normally shows and she's not showing it anymore i'm not sure why because this is actually in a psychiatric um i'm gonna say ward and i usually don't say that but it really is it is uh, extremely acute it kind of depicts for me more of what you would see at Crestwood. So that's why I chose that one over the other one, which is still really a good video. The one that Marsha tends to show. Um, so I think you'll really then be able to at least again, like what Sydney and uh, Edwina were talking about at the beginning, you got this exposure and then you'll get to at least see a different type of exposure. And, and it's actually really entertaining too. So, I mean, the last time the students, Stephen's like, I was eating popcorn and like people like Annette made it a date night. Like, so, so try to enjoy it if you can. So that's not due till Sunday. So that takes a little pressure off today. Hopefully that helps. I know you guys have a, from what I heard, you have a lot going on right now. Uh, check off tomorrow, all this stuff. So um, to wrap up our clinical, what we're going to do is, and again, Virginia should be on soon. She had an appointment, so, um, which is totally fine because we're on way earlier than normal. Um, I do a psych and medication management jeopardy. And again, as a format, so I'm basically going to tell you who you go after. So I'll say it right now. So Sydney, I, I'm not picking on you. You're just below me. So Sydney's number one. <laughs> and then if Sydney doesn't know the answer, then it's going to go to Christina. Sydney will say pass and it goes to Christina. Then if Christina doesn't know, it's going to go to Edwina. 
And then if Edwina doesn't know, it's going to go to Rosa. And then if Rosa doesn't know, it's going to go to Casey. Why do the guys always end up last every time yesterday too? Sorry. We're, this is not a, I'm not discriminating. Um, so if Rosa doesn't know, then it goes to Casey. And then if Casey doesn't know, it goes to Godwin. Okay. So this is just a review that I actually use this specific review in, um, when I teach at El Camino. So my patients at El Camino, they learn all this stuff too. When I teach about comorbidities and dual diagnosis. So I did this the first time and it went really well. It's just a nice way for you to look and say, wow, okay, I did learn something. I will say this specific clinical compared to the other one, you guys probably learned about maybe 8% less only because of like interruptions. And then the first day I had the emergency, but that's why we're going to do this. If we don't know it, I'll teach it right now on here. So does it sound good? Yes. yes. Do this? Okay. All right. So Sydney, what would yeah. you like my dear? Which one? Um, I will do psychiatric dis or yeah, psychiatric diagnosis for 200. All right. Oh, oh and so Sydney gets the chance to answer it first. Okay. Nobody blurt it out, please. Okay. So mania oh, and depression. Uh, bipolar. Oh, well, well, wow. Okay. <laughs> yep. And that's right. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Anyway, I I wish... yeah. <laughs> Perfect. No, excellent job. So yes, that is exactly true. And these are all pretty broad um, again, cause we're not trying to make you psychiatrists. So if you can recognize that, that is excellent. Very good job. All right. Next. Whoever I said is next. Sorry. Cause my oh. notes are all out of order. <laughs> okay. I think I was next. I think so. Too. Um, um, I'll do, um, I'll do the psychiatric diagnosis, um, for 300. Okay. Big spender. Okay. True or false depression and anxiety are often associated with each other. Um, true. Very true. Yes. And we haven't specifically talked about it. Um, so it's a 50, 50 chance and you are absolutely correct. A depression and anxiety, they really do often go together. And one way I tend to, um, help people remember that is thinking about the medications. So if we think about medication for depression specifically, like, um, the ones that we've talked about, I remember I picked three, um, Lexapro, Zoloft and Prozac, I believe for the three that I chose. So, I believe yeah. uh, that are SSRIs and all of those medications are antidepressants. However, they're made to also treat anxiety. So they help with anxiety, generalized anxiety, not panic attacks. That's more of benzodiazepines, maybe gabapentin, um, depending on what medication, but for generalized anxiety. So that would make sense, right? And even Cymbalta, remember the three SNRIs, Cymbalta, Pristique, and Epexor, same thing. They can help with anxiety as well. So that's how I help people remember if it's for depression and it helps with anxiety, a lot of the time, not every time, but a lot of the time they do go together. So yes. just as a general um, way to remember it. Good job. All right. So true. And next okay psychiatric uh, diagnosis uh 400 we're, we're just gonna stay here <laughs> you guys you're so funny <laughs> true or false schizophrenia this is a hard question so really think about it so schizophrenia can only be treated with medication false. see and everybody everybody says false so remember think about when judy was drawing on the i, I don't even really remember it but mm -hmm. i just remember there were a lot of lines Mm -hmm. um, a lot of words and remember mm -hmm. how she put that there's environmental factors there's brain yeah. chemistry and schizophrenia was under the one that has to mainly do with brain chemistry so unfortunately and again I don't like to put everything in a box I have never met mm -hmm. anybody even though there's a spectrum I've never mm -hmm. met anybody with schizophrenia that is not on an antipsychotic however I will say this it's kind of like taking somebody with extreme anxiety and throwing them into a, a, a group to learn about, you know, managing their symptoms. Do you think they're going to learn much if you're like so anxious, you're about to crawl out of your skin? So 
using medication in the beginning and then getting to um, uh, therapy for someone with extreme anxiety is different than someone with schizophrenia because the brain is changed. The brain is not the same. So schizophrenia, remember, means that you have very high levels of dopamine. You will Mm -hmm. always have that. So if we don't lower it and what do antipsychotics do? They do what to dopamine? They lower it. So if we don't have that, we're going to see the hallucinations, delusions, and acting out. Now, maybe you're on the spectrum on the lower end, so you don't need as high of a dose. But unfortunately, and again, I hate to say it for, I've never seen it. And Judy agrees because I remember when she taught it and I was like, oh, good. I'm glad she thinks that too, because I've never seen that. So um, the answer is actually in, in every, I don't think anyone's ever I've been doing this a long time and everyone says false. And the answer is actually true. But I have a question, uh, Ms. Amanda. Yes. Uh, Ms. Judy said that it can never be treated because it can reduce or control the symptom. Yes. Like if Katie can remember the day yes. she brought the medication checkbook, the card, the, it can be treated, but rather it can reduce or control the symptoms. So why is it true here that medication can, cure, uh, can treat schizophrenia? I think I heard your question right. So the Miss Judy is absolutely correct. So the medication uh-huh. will can help control the symptoms. So uh-huh. the, the voices or whatever is going on with the patient. And that's uh-huh. what the medication does. And that's, I'm afraid to go back. I think, ah, uh, no, or yes. Nah, damn it. Darn it. Sorry. <laughs> no. Okay. Stay on page. No. So, oh, sorry. You have a baby. And I said about work. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I, 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 I can hear this little. Uh, uh. She's okay, I can. Let me just open these real quick. Oh well. Okay. Name. I'll name two symptoms of depression: lethargy, la- lack of appetite. We've already done these ones. Sydney did that. Christina did that. And then. And that is the question we are in now, yeah. Okay, I'm like, is this it? Okay. Um, so so basically, you just answered, what was the question? Because you answered the question correctly, how you just verbalized it. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Can only be treated with medication. I said yes. no, that is false. Because well, according to Ms. Judy, it can never, it can be treated. Rather, it can be controlled or control the symptoms or um, manage the symptoms not treating oh tomato tomato um not not i'm not rolling my eyes at you i'm rolling them at her um (laughs) tomato (laughs) tomato as far as uh, is there ever going to be a cure no but yes so is this question maybe um could it be rearranged like with the words but the big picture what you just said is exactly right it helps to treat the symptoms rather than treating the disorder disorder yeah do you have to call me out like that, Edwina? Okay. <laughs> I think it's this is your final. So um, I'm and actually this technically is our final, but it's a group final, so we all do it together. Yeah. So, and you're all gonna pass, right? Yeah. Except, yes. except Edwina. <laughs> we'll see how she behaves the rest of the time. No, but that's an excellent way to say it. Thank you for um your verbiage because that can be really important for somebody to help remember and make connections. So yeah. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, who's next? I'm next. I'm next. Um, let's do whose voice is that? Medication for 100. Is that Rosa? Yes. Oh, you sound different. Okay, medication for 100. Okay, true or false? All medication will react the same for all patients. False. Okay, I was going to say, this is the one question, if you get it wrong, everybody fails. <laughs> so this is why we have to be really careful. Um, I'm not going to go into much, much, much detail because I already know that you guys understand this. But when I've had um, my first rehab, well, the first and second one that I opened, I actually had a rule where patients were not allowed to talk about their medications alone. They could do it in, the, in a milieu setting in a group only because 
and unless obviously they're feeling better and they're like, dude, I'm feeling so much better or something like that. But it would be like, if I said to Casey, like, oh my God, Casey, oh, I just got put on gabapentin. I'm so fat. And by the way, it's like a 1% chance you're going to get edema. It's so slight. And that's not weight, that's water weight. And that's like usually in your extremities, but, and like, I could tell him and we're in the treatment together. Maybe I'm not, if I'm in treatment, usually I'm not thinking as clear, clearly as possible. Right. Um, that's why I'm in treatment. And I'm telling him this medication sucks. The doctor just prescribed it to you today, man. I would not take that medication. But what if that medication is like the saving grace for Casey? Let's say he has really bad anxiety and he has trouble sleeping. Kill two birds, one stone. That medication is not habit forming. And how do we know a medication is not habit forming? Because it doesn't excrete dopamine in what part of the brain? What is it called? If you watch the videos last week. Yes. Hypothalamus. And that's a part of it. That's it. very good. It's called uh, cerebral. Uh-uh. That's a different reward pathway. Oh shoot, yeah. Or circuit, either way. So if if something doesn't excrete dopamine, so dopamine's a neurotransmitter, and dopamine, depending on where in the brain it works, just as a side note. So in the reward pathway, if it's not excreted, that means that it technically doesn't have the potential to be habit forming. So does sex have the potential to be habit forming? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because remember your reward pathway was actually put there in your brain. All all of our brain was, it's meant to do something. The frontal lobe is meant to do something. The temporal lobe, occipital from sight, the occipital lobe to judgment, impulsivity in the frontal lobe. So your reward pathway was actually put there for survival. And so that dopamine, when it comes into that area is actually supposed to give you a reward. So for example, do you need food to live? Yeah. Yeah. Please everyone say yes. Okay. Yes. So so when you eat food, does it usually feel good if you like the food? Yes. It feels good. That's why we eat and we eat and we eat. So that means dopamine is released into your reward pathway. So what it does is it's giving you a reward. And by giving you that reward of feeling, ooh, tingly and happy and kind of maybe I'm not saying you're like super, super euphoric because there's different amounts of euphoria. Obviously, methamphetamine is gonna give you way more dopamine than a uh, chicken sandwich, but, um, basically then once you get that reward, you get reinforcement. So you get the dopamine goes into the reward pathway. If it has a potential to be addictive or it's for survival, then you get the reward. And then that reward gives you reinforcement to want to do it again. So if, and I, 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 sex really is just the easy, I, it really, it just, for most people, it really helps them remember it. So I like to equate that. And we're all grown ups. I think that we can have this conversation. We're in nursing school. So if orgasms did not exist, that, I mean, that's usually how more people get put on the planet. Um, not always there's in vitro, but that's why we have babies, right. To keep the world going. And like, I guess we love them and stuff. Um, <laughs> sometimes. Wow. Not all the time, um, but most of the time. And so if an orgasm did not feel good, so there's a reason why sex feels good. Dopamine's released. So I know that it has the potential to be habit forming. You're getting the reward and then you're getting reinforcement to want to do it again. Hopefully not to the um, extension of an addiction. So is, does alcohol secrete dopamine in the reward pathway? Yeah. Does heroin? Yes. Yes. Does gaming, if to well, gaming in general, yeah, or could it like playing yes. video games? Yep. Yes. Um, exercise. Yes. Opiates. Yes. Of course. Perfect. Okay. Good. You guys got it. Excellent. Good job. All right. And who's next? Me. All right. What would you like? Uh, five hundred dollar for diagnosis. <laughs> Oh my God. We'll just knock this one out. (laughs) What does it mean when you have somatic symptoms from depression and or anxiety? So what does somatic symptom mean? It says symptoms from anxiety. Somatic. Okay. Uh, What does it mean? uh, You have somatic symptoms from depression, anxiety. The somatic means the the system that we can see in the body. Oh, good. Yeah. So... One might, uh, when somebody from depression or anxiety, one might feel sad. Give me um, examples of anxiety. 
So if you have anxiety somatically, mm-hmm. what might happen to your body? What uh, am I going to see? I might I have, like- a, um, I might be taking a deep breath. Yep. Trouble breathing. Trouble what breathing, else? restlessness. Mm. Your hands mm-hmm. might be what? Trembling hand might Trem- be taking, trembling. Trembling. Tremoring. Uh-huh. Yep. Might feel low in energy. The girls are all trying to help you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, girls. girls stop it. <laughs> um, sweating, sweating, stomach upset, all, all sort. I mean, mu- muscle tension. If anyone's ever been, I mean, I'm sure you've all taken tests online. I mean, that anxiety and you're like typing and it's, oh, it's awful. Uh, so that, excellent. Those are, so, and, and it's good to know what somatic symptoms are for everything. Because if I have a patient that came in for surgery, I'm going to, if they're sweating and I'm, and I can actually see, or they're acting in a certain way, I can hopefully recognize that and be able to help them through that. Um, for depression, um, I'll just, if you, may, may I help you do that one? Please. I like that one. I like that one. Um, so a lot, a lot of the time for depression, um, you're going to see stomach upset. So there's a lot of stomach upset, same thing as far as the um, muscle tension, but um, IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, um, diarrhea. You can also see sweating and whatnot, but a lot of the times you'll also see um, lethargy, just kind of like uh, no affect, um, that type of thing. Very good to know what somatic, some, and I'm not going to say who got this question yesterday, but they didn't know what it meant. So good job. Any questions about this question? It's just, it's an assessment question. Well done. Perfect. And last but not least, is God here? Where's God? I'm here. <laughs> he's, he's here. What would you like? <laughs> Let me get something to sleep and see if he can help me. Oh, <laughs> Someone, you know, it's funny. The person that so, they said the same thing yesterday. What, what do you want? Sleep medication? So let me see sleep medication for 200. You may. <clears throat> what is the brand name for diphenhydramine? Benadryl. Excellent. I knew I was going to, I was like, yep, this is perfect question. So diphenhydramine is an antihistamine. We can use it off label for what? For sleep. For sleep. Yes. And it's, you guys, and this is a group question, is Benadryl considered habit forming? Or I'm sorry, addictive. I don't like that word, habit forming. We can no. buy it over no. the counter. No. Not so, considered. No. Exactly. The first indication is if you can buy it over the counter in the United States, um, it's not habit form or it, can, it doesn't have the potential to be addictive. Now, can I abuse? diphenhydramine or gabapentin or all these things that are not considered addictive of course i can abuse anything yeah, so I, if i abusive. people snort um benadryl um it doesn't physiologically you do not become dependent on it but if i came home and i was like oh my god i just want to zone out so bad i'm gonna like and i want to do it quick i could break open some gabapentin if it's in a capsule I'm not like encouraging you or teaching you how to use drugs, but because um, gabapentin is technically not a- addictive. Uh, I think it's a great medication, but, or if I like lined it up like cocaine and snorted it, I'm going to feel it quick and I'm going to feel relaxed as, as very, very, very relaxed. However, it does not ignite dopamine in my reward pathway. So it's important to understand you can abuse Benadryl. You can abuse all of these things and it can potentially, depending on, now, now if you do that to Prozac, it's not going to do anything to you. Don't, I mean- because it's not an anti-anxiety or um, an anti-histamine. Um, so it's not going to make you tired. So just understanding the difference, because people will ask you, well, what does that mean? Yes, I can abuse that. I've gotten a lot of de- debates about that. So good job. All right. I think we're back to the first, the first lady, I think. Yeah. All right. Uh... Hmm. <laughs> I'll do 300 for the brain. All right. Chemicals in the brain that transmit and communicate in the brain are called what? Neurotransmitters. Beautiful. And I know it seems like that's why would we put that. That's so easy. Well, neurotransmitters, that's what medications work on. 
So medications work on neurotransmitters um, for mental health. All mental health medications go to the brain. So that's why that's on there. So very good. So as, so neurotransmitters are how our brain communicates, just how you're like, if people sign language or uh, verbally through their mouth, how I would maybe tell, Hey Rosa, um, I'm hot. Can you open the door? That would be like a neurotransmitter working in the brain, but I'm just using my mouth because that's how we communicate as humans. So that's how I remember it. Very good. Uh, Christina. Um, I'll do medication for 200. Medication, medication. Okay. Medication. What can Lexapro be used for? Um, I mentioned it earlier. For, um, for pain or not? <laughs> one could argue actually um once you find out what it's so it's an antidepressant yes yes exactly yes depression yep. so depression <laughs> yeah. no ex- that's excellent so that's okay. pro prozac and again i don't know why you chose those oh i don't know why i thought i was i was thinking like it as a, like an off label like a, oh, a no. second nope a You're second right. thing to treat <laughs> but yeah it can got be it for depression it's an antidepressant and you, that's perfect. And th- that's why when you said pain, I was like, well, I mean, kind of, but it's an antidepressant. <laughs> Very good. It can also be used for anxiety as mentioned earlier. Um, mm-hmm. Most antidepressants treat, can treat both because they are often go together. All right. And who's next? I think me. me. Yes. Okay, let me do uh, medication for 400, please. Okay, 400. Okay, um, name the medication that is classified as an anti- anti-seizure medication is often used for anxiety, sleep, neuropathy, and can be used up to 4,000 milligrams a day and is not considered habit-forming. Oh, hold on. Can be used uh, for sleeping, anti-seizure medication that... Um, <laughs> Mm-hmm. I don't, uh, yep, I knew. Yep. yep. Very good. See, do you guys see like you you learn something, right? Uh-huh. Like it's uh-huh. it's amazing. Not amazing that you can learn, amazing just the recall. Like it it sticks with you. Very good. All right. Next. Let's do sleep medication 100. All right. Okay, so now a hormone, that's important, a hormone that is produced in the brain to help regulate sleep and wakefulness. Melatonin. You guys are, did you like study or something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, this is going much faster than, yeah, they did a great job, but this is going much faster than yesterday. Um, so yes, melatonin is a hormone. Can we buy it over the counter? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Is it considered have a <laughs> You can buy it for kids too. You can, absolutely, yes. So it's uh, not considered habit forming because it does not release dopamine in the reward pathway. Um, it works for some people, doesn't for others. And um, it starts to secrete as it gets dark. So that that's why people that change their schedules, it can be really, really difficult because your sleep, wake, circadian rhythm, everything gets off. I met a nurse that bought uh, melatonin and then she would, she would work the knock shift. And when she got home, she would close, she would buy the, the blinds that have like the dark. Yeah. So she, she would take melatonin yep. and then close all the windows and doors and everything will be so dark. And then she will fall asleep like that. And, th- and that is exactly how I would recommend doing it because now your brain is producing its own. Plus you're getting that little bit that's not habit forming and it's dark. So that's, actually the perfect way to do it smart nurse so if you guys ever end up on knock shift that's usually a good way or you don't and you don't have to take melatonin but if you're having trouble sleeping because i mean i do all the time so imagine having to sleep during the day be like no i need to work get up do something so very good example i think we're to the boys is it casey (laughs) Am I wrong? I'm sorry. Did I skip skip someone? This is Casey. Yeah, my turn. So I'll go to uh, Brain 100. Okay. Brain 100. Okay. 
What does CNS stand for? Girl tells me no. Central nervous system. Very good. Um, yesterday, because it's kind of an odd question, like people were like, why are you putting that in here? And so I, I said PNS and they thought I said penis. <laughs> Sorry, I know your child might be in the room. And I was like, no, 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 no. no. And oh my God, that group is so rowdy. <laughs> um, so no, it's central nervous system. And why would I put that here? So I put that here because a lot of medications um, that we use in psychiatric medicine, especially in crisis, so a lot of where you guys were probably located. Um, oh God, was that your wife? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Casey's like, I'm gonna get in trouble later. Um, <laughs> I apologize. Um, okay. So a lot of the medications that we use, especially in where you guys, a lot of you were located, we quickly work on the central nervous system like benzodiazepines if we need to give um, an injection of haldol which is an antipsychotic we really want to get our patients so they don't hurt themselves or others um, we would do something that would suppress the central nervous system so that's why i put this on here very good central nervous system all right god when let me see let me take another sleep medication and see what. <laughs> it looks like the first one was not enough. Apparently. <laughs> Which one would you like? 500? Let's, let's go for whichever. Um, Are you tired? Five, 500? 500. Let's do 500. A sleep medication that was originally made for depression, but is now used for sleep and is not considered addictive. I think we may have barely talked about the medication. It starts with a T as in Tom. It Trazodone. Uses, beautiful. Trazodone. So just a quick reminder. Excellent. Um, trazodone, it used to be used for depression, but in order, so medications have therapeutic doses. So if I were to give Rosa one milligram of Ad, um, Advil, one milligram. So the normal is like 400, 600, right? If you have a headache or something. So if I gave you one milligram, do you think that's going to do anything? No, that's not a therapeutic dose. It's going to do nothing. So with trazodone, if I give you 600 milligrams, it will have something to do with your serotonin and it will help utilize it better in the brain. Because remember, it doesn't make more. It helps utilize it better in the brain. However, they realize, well, okay, these people are that are on this medication are just sleeping all the time. So yeah, you're not depressed because you're sleeping, but that's not a good treatment right? I mean, we want yeah. people to feel better. So that's not the exactly. That's not exactly. We don't, that's not the intention. And we, we want them to live the best life possible. So someone, you know, and that's how off labels use. We see a different thing that we can use it for. And in this case, I've never seen a patient use trazodone for depression um, because they can't, I mean, you just knock out. Um, so they said, Hmm, well, we could use the byproduct and the side effect at like 50 to 250 milligrams. The average dose is, I would probably say hundred to 150, but I have seen people on it up, up to 300. In my personal opinion, if we go to 250 and it's not working, I'm going to switch it, but I've seen the highest dose 300 for sleep and we use it for sleep and it's not habit forming. We use it all the time in addiction because it's not um, it doesn't release dopamine and a lot of people tolerate it very well and it's cheap insurance pays for it. And in my opinion, and I'm not knocking Ambien or any of those medications that are habit forming. However, why not try this first? Why not? Why not try this or GABA or melatonin? Like there's so many things we can try first before we go straight to Ambien or straight. And I'm not, again, putting anybody down. If you're on Ambien, I'm just saying, Hey, this actually can work much better. You hit REM sleep with Ambien. A lot of the time you don't hit as much REM. So you're actually not getting as much sleep. You might be sleeping, but what your brain's actually doing is not as adequate as maybe being on another medication. So good job, Godwin. All right, Sydney. Yes. Um, I'll do 300 to body. All right. I'm like, come on, let's go over here. All right. The liver breaks down medication in order for it to be able to do what it needs to do in the body. What is this called? Uh, 
I don't like the way this is worded. And I wrote this. Um, so, so I'll re-say it. So basically when your liver is working and doing something, what is that called? It starts with an M. Metabolize. Exactly. I should rewrite this question. Okay. You're absolutely right. So metabolizing. So my favorite example of this is um, there's a medication called naltrexone. Um, we don't, we won't get into it. It's an anti-craving medication. You technically only need like 13 milligrams of it in your body for it to work. And I know that because they have an injectable form. And if you do the math, 380 divided by 28, cause you get it every 28 days that equals around 13, but they also have an oral dose, but they have to take 50 milligrams a day. Why do they have to take 50? Because your liver breaks down so much of it that in order for it to keep around that 13, 14 milligrams, you have to take 50. So your liver sometimes metabolizes a lot of your medication, so much of it. That's why you have to take a higher dose um, than actually necessary. So So if you ever, Mm -hmm. sorry. So that's why like IVs or injections are better because it skips that phase of things and it doesn't have to metabolize. It's exactly, it skips that first pass metabolism, which if you guys haven't learned about, you will eventually. And that's why you might notice if they're, for example, in Vega, that's an anti um, psychotic and um, Abilify is a pill form. And usually they'll start you if, if like you're on um, Abilify, they'll switch you over to in Vega as an anti psychotic because of medication compliance. You'll notice the doses are, they look very different. You might be on such a high dose if you added it up for the month in comparison to the injectable because it slowly releases. So just food for thought. It's kind of cool. I think it's cool. Uh, Christina. Good. And um, I'll do brain for 200. Brain, brain, brain. Okay, brain. What neurotransmitter does depression primarily interact with? Primarily interact with... Um, Think of this. The serotonin. Yes. Do you yes. see? I told you this works, right? <laughs> You're absolutely right. Of course, it interacts with other neurotransmitters, but primarily, and again, I'm just this is just a game. Um, primarily it's serotonin, serotonin, norepinephrine. Good job. Edwina. Uh, let's go. Uh, medication 500. Medication. All right. What neurotransmitters do S N R I S interact with? So what is the S? S is serotonin. Yes. Um, it's interact with um, serotonin. It's serotonin? Right? That is correct. Yeah. And what is the N for? Okay. The N stands for reuptake. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Serotonin. Hold on. Hold on. Remember, we double. Hold on. 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 Okay. Hold on. Let me. Um... <laughs> It scares me. I'll listen to you. Whatever you want. No, okay, okay. X and uh, the N stands for um uh, neuroparephrase. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh. You got the answer. Right. This- so <laughs> So serotonin and norepinephrine because we double the yeah. So it's selective serotonin, mm-hmm. norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. That is perfect. yeah. So if, good job. So if, okay, and remember, Effexor, Pristique, and Cymbalta, those are the three primary um, SNRIs. So if serotonin were um, being utilized in the brain correctly, and this is for everybody, what should we feel? Um, Say it. Well-being. Well-being. And then if norepinephrine is being utilized properly in the brain, we should feel two things. And what are those two things? energy yep motivation motivation yeah exactly you guys not not you guys (laughs) i think males don't deliver quiet madison my god i think she's cold because i'm washing her blanket stop they're so needy (laughs) yes so you're absolutely right energy and motivation good job 
So you guys are passing the class. You're so close. Um, that was Edwina. I think Rosa's next. Let's do body 100. Body, body, Easy. Body, body, body. Yep. Body. Oh my God. You can just read it. <laughs> oh, true or false? And it can be toxic on delivery. True. That is that. Yep. That is true. And NSAIDs are, or potentially could be hard on, and this is for everyone, for what organ? There's two. Stomach. Stomach. And what else? Kidneys. Kidneys. Excellent. God, you guys are so smart. <laughs> Excellent job. Uh, okay, I think it's boys now. 200. Okay. Two, two, uh, oh, Body 200. You know what? I think there's diagnosis, but we don't see it. You guys have to put your um, your little face up. Oh, it's true. Yeah, because we're not able to see that that row. I, Wait, I can see it. Diagnosis is done. I can see no. it. Yeah. No, it's, it's not. done. It's right another one on done. the right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, right here. No, over here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I wasn't I wasn't seeing that. That's when I was like, huh, there's more. Oh there. yeah, put the faces at the bottom, because yeah, otherwise right. you won't see. There's another row. In case you didn't see okay. it. Okay. You still want the body, Casey? Yes, body 200. Okay. What fruit often interacts with several medications? Casey says it. Grapefruit? Yes, grapefruit. And most people ask me why, and it can do one of two things. It's either going to potentially speed up how fast the medication is working, or it's going to slow it down. Slow I don't down. know. I don't know by heart. I just know that any place I work, I don't allow grapefruit juice, <laughs> period. Just because I don't want to take the chance and it's not very good anyway. Like, I don't like it. Um, but yes, yeah, so those are, that's the reason. So if anybody ever asks you, oh, why is that so? It can do one of two things, either speed it up or slow it down. We don't want it to speed it up because what if it's a sedative? Couldn't that potentially cause a fall or somebody to be too out of it? We don't want that. That's not therapeutic, um, a, th a therapeutic um uh, uh, uh oh my god i can't think of like good verbiage in this moment but that's not what we want from the medication and then we don't want to slow it down because we want the medication to work as it should so that's why in most bottles i will say um to avoid grapefruit or grapefruit juice very good okay godwin should i just go to sleep <laughs> over here <laughs> it's overdosed <laughs> Let's, let's take 400. Okay. <laughs> Name sleep. three prescription medications used for three or for sleep. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. So I, I have uh, the first one, melatonin. No. So you've already said two. We've already, you've said one of them already. So prescription. You've already said one. It starts with a T. Oh, prescription. Yeah. Okay, I was, I was not looking at a specific condition. So I'm still thinking of uh, evidence base, which is one thing I, I will still talk about that at the end. All right, so the, the first uh, prescription, Ambien. Ambien, yes. And then second one, Trazidone. Yes. And then third one should be, um, what is that? Uh, I know there's there's so many. Yeah, uh, so I mean, trazidone trans, and um, and temazepam. I knew, I knew it. Temazepam, uh, that's what the uh, rest yes. is. Yes, I knew you were gonna. I, I swear, I knew you were gonna say that. Um, okay, so yes, you are correct. So temazepam, for those of you who don't know it, it's a benzodiazepine. So that would fall into the same category as like Ativan, diazepam, clonopin, Xanax. Um, personally, no, Godwin is correct. Um, they do use it off label for sleep. I personally, if it's for somebody in crisis, don't have a problem with it. If it's for somebody that is not in crisis, personally, this is my opinion, I don't believe we should use benzos for sleep because they're habit forming yeah. and they're very habit forming. Ambien is different. It doesn't like get you high. It's just, it, 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 temazepam can. Temazepam is like taking, it's like drinking alcohol. 
It's, it's, it's the pill equivalent of, of alcohol. And again, now I'm not trying to say that it's bad medication. I'm glad that we have temazepam. It helps many, many people, but personally, I think we should use it in crisis. I just want to say that out loud. Um, he mentioned trazodone, which we know what that is. Cause we talked about that. And he also mentioned Ambien. So temazepam and Ambien both are considered potentially addictive because they ignite dopamine in the reward pathway. Now, does that mean you're going to become addicted to it? No, it does not. It just means it has the potential. So I want to make that clear. And then trazodone does not. Any questions about that? Good job, Godwin. I knew you'd get there. It's always the third one. It's like, um, and I usually just say gabapentin. I'm like, ah, there's just, there's so many. It's hard to like get it in your brain. Yeah. Good job. All right, Sydney. Um, I'll do um, diagnosis for 400. Excellent. Thank you. What book is used to diagnose psychiatric disorders? Oh, the DSM five, but I can't really ever remember. Like, what I don't care. For. That doesn't even matter. That is okay. Beautiful. That is excellent. Now, would you have known that six weeks ago? Probably not. <laughs> See, you guys, you're making me very happy. <laughs> so it stands for Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Now, honestly, I don't, it's very rare anyone's ever going to ask you that. If you just know what a DSM is and you see it and you know, hey, that's how you do you use that to diagnose a mental health disorder. Hey, I'm good with that. It makes me happy, right? You now mm-hmm. you know what that is and you will see it. You'll see it even in nursing homes and all over. So excellent job. All right, uh, Christina, I believe. Um, let's do medication for 300. Thank you. Oh, oh shoot. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry so, about that. Uh, sleep what disorder was- that causes one to stop breathing while they are asleep often on during the night a sleep disorder that causes one to stop breathing uh, and, then, oh. and this is it doesn't sound psychiatric but i'll tell you after the answer why it's psychiatric so is think it of- a sleep apnea it's Christina's turn. I don't know. I just have sleep apnea, but I don't know if that's right. No, you're right. That's exactly oh. right. <laughs> and that's why people hesitate because they're like, this isn't psychiatric, but I'll explain why. So no, you are absolutely all Godwin, Sydney, and Christina are all right. Well, I just said it doesn't start with that's all I said. <laughs> oh, okay. I just thought you light up. You're you're oh, okay. lit up. Um, which I love now that my computer does that because now I know who's actually talking. Um So the reason why I put this on here, just very small food for thought is that, so first of all, there are two types of sleep apnea. One is obstructive and that's when we have too much tissue in our airway and that can actually be fixed with surgery. And then there's one in the brain and I can't explain it to you. I don't know everything, but I know that it happens in the brain. The reason why I put this on here is because sleep just, um, I'm sorry, sleep apnea has been linked to depression. That's it simple. I'm not going to give you percentages. I don't, cause I don't know, but I know it's more common in men. That's all I do know. So sleep apnea has been linked to depression, which kind of makes sense because if you think about it, you're not sleeping well because you're constantly waking up going, <clears throat> not being able to breathe. I'm saying if un- untreated. So if you're not using a CPAP and, and whatnot, and then you're not getting good sleep. And remember what, what I said, when you sleep, what happens? Your neurotransmitters they basically um, recycle themselves and they build new ones. So that, that, that would make sense. That's how I justify it. But there are studies that show that. So I think that's kind of cool to know. And it helps people that do have sleep apnea actually go get help. Cause they're like, oh my God, maybe that's what's going on. Same thing with thyroid. If you came to me and you said I have, I, you, and you gave me depressive symptoms, I'm going to test your thyroid, your vitamin D. Vitamin D is another thing that, um, I don't care what color you are. Everybody on on here is probably including myself, vitamin D deficient and and don't know it. I'm going to rule things out. I'm just not going to throw an antidepressant at you. Right. I want to do a physical. I want to, I want to know more. So we want to, we want to be better. I hopefully. Okay. So that was Christina Edwina. Edwina. 
Ed, Edwin, no? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's make sure I've been okay. talking. I've been talking. Let's clear medication. And <laughs> I was still muted. Did you say medication for 300? Yeah, let's clear it. Yeah. Okay, let's just clear this out. What classification of medication does Ativan fall into? What classification? It's an anti. Hmm. Anti. Is it antidepressant? Ativan or psychotic? Ativan. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm, ho I'm, oh, I'm holding. <laughs> Ativan <laughs> is. Um, Lada Zrapan, all right? Is anti psychotic. Think a little bit. So it's a benzodiazepine. So that means uh -huh. it's an anti. So think Ativan. Valium, Xanax, Tamazepam. Um, why do we normally give those? Oh, sorry, anticonvulsant. So that's not wrong, actually. So, so technically, the classification is anti-anxiety, but mm -hmm. we do give Ativan. So, if someone's either to prevent a seizure if they're coming off of alcohol yeah. or or benzos or um, certain uh, what's it called. I don't even want to mention it because those are the two main ones. Or if someone's actively having a seizure, we'll give them uh -huh. an injection of a benzo. So you're not wrong. Uh -huh. I was, yeah, that's exactly right. And actually you just taught us more because I wasn't even going to mention that. So classification wise, it's an anti-anxiety specifically. It's a benzo uh -huh. and we can use it for seizures. Very okay. good. You're just teaching us all sorts of extra information today. Oh, Benzo. Perfect. Okay, so Edwina Rosa. Let's do 100 diagnoses. All right. What does OCD stand for? Uh, over the counter drugs. Oh, wait, no. Um, I know. You're going to get it. <laughs> uh, Over compulsive disorder. So close. So compulsive disorders, right? Think of the first one. When you keep thinking about something and you want it and you want it and you want it. What are you doing? You are doing obsessive. That. Obsessive. Yes, exactly. Okay. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Very good. One of the things that breaks my heart. I working with that disorder is very, very difficult for me. It's very hard to watch. Um, and that is considered an anxiety disorder, by the way. Um, just for which makes sense, right? Um, hopefully, very good, good job. Um, now it's boy time. Two hundred diagnosis. Okay, perfect. Name some stigma against mental health. Uh, the stigma about mental health. Uh, people uh, not talking about it. Correct. Yeah, we should talk about mental health and people make people more aware from the grassroots level to deal with the problem of mental health. That's what I know. Do you, do I mention a specific word for that? Um, pretty much what you said is correct. I mean, it, it's an example. Um, the only thing I'm going to add to it is kind of like that. It, it's not real. Like, come on, just get off the couch. You're not really depressed. Go for a walk. You're fine. You don't need this. It's kind of like play down and not talked about. So that's basically exactly what you said. I just elaborated. Mm -hmm. Good job. Godwin, there's no more sleep. So you got to pick something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, um, which one is remaining? 300 for diagnosis. Okie dokie. True or false? Okay. So the, no, no, really think about this. Bulimia is often associated with food restriction in patients that are underweight. Bulimia, not anorexia, bulimia. No, that's false. You are absolutely right. Um, Instead, they eat too much. They don't restrict. And usually then throw it out throw, or... Throw up or um, laxatives, one or the other. So usually it, this is harder to diagnose. And just so you know, once bulimia, just 
I think this is very important to understand once bulimia becomes bulimia because the first couple times you throw up that doesn't feel good right you're like you remember your childhood you remember oh and I'm sick and stayed home from school and you're throwing up and it's awful or as an adult throwing up usually isn't fun however once it becomes a coping mechanism that's usually what bulimia is about it's a coping mechanism it actually releases dopamine in the reward <clears throat> pathway so now is it considered an addiction no it's not in the dsm-5 however there have been documented cases with evident evidence-based practice under a functional mri where i can watch in your brain if i talk about it it will light up dopamine in your reward pathway so what that tells me is that you're basically I'm not saying you're addicted to throwing up, but it gives you pleasure instead of pain. I think that's very interesting. Um, I have a video on it. If you ever want to watch it, um, I'll send it to you. It's just a, a, like a doc, a little clip of a doctor talking about it. So good job. False. All right, Sydney. Um, I'll do the last diagnosis for 500. All right. What does dual diagnosis mean? And give me an example. Okay. Um, say like somebody has like a mental disorder such as bipolar mm -hmm. and then it's contributing to maybe like hypertension. So close. Okay. Okay. So that's a comorbidity and that, that's exactly oh. the answer I got yesterday. So, so think of dual. So you were right on the first one, but I think you said bipolar disorder. So, okay, wait. Yep. Go for it. Maybe like anxiety and bipolar. Yes. Well, okay. Mm, even, <laughs> even closer. Um, you're so close. It's like uh, hard not to say it. So keep that. So anxiety and bipolar disorder, but it has to be paired with something specific. Think of alcohol, heroin. Okay. And then they just can, so then they abuse, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you, you basically, you basically said it just, Oh, it's just like, they're included like, um, coping mechanism. Like, so it leads to abusive. So what would an example be? So, um, you already said it so bipolar disorder and alcohol use disorder. Uh -huh. Now you give me one, you said anxiety. Uh -huh. So let's use anxiety disorder and now give me an, so it's, Mental health and addiction. Okay. So I can't, that doesn't include like anxiety and depression. It can on this side. So someone can have anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. but, th but then they also have to have um, an ad addiction diagnosis as well. That's what dual diagnosis Oh, okay. Is. So they all have an addictive? Something addiction, aspect. but something mental health. Okay. Um, okay. So like anxiety and depression with obsessive compulsive <laughs> where's the addiction the obsessive compulsive I thought that was kind of like addictive mm -mm. But that's sure. not I don't know <laughs> no actually that's an interesting thought though because I can see why you think that that's actually yeah I thought kind of like it, it's not it's it, it, I'm 100 percent sure um with that okay. one that's my love of my life is addiction, but, um, so I'll give you, so bipolar disorder and alcohol use disorder, anxiety disorder and heroin use disorder, um, okay. uh, a, a sex addiction and, um, schizophrenia. So it has okay. to be something mental health, like anxiety, bipolar, um, depression, and then something addiction. So alcoholism, mm -hmm. um, heroin addiction, which is an opiate, so opiate abuse disorder or whatever. Um, so it has to be one of those two. Okay. Perfect. People have a lot of trouble with this because they always want to do comorbidity. And I'm like, no, it's not comorbidity, but it sounds, it's very similar. Yeah. So that, that could be the same, like a bipolar disorder and a, a, what sex abuse, is it? It's very common. Yeah. Yep. Because when we get manic, everything's out the window and sex is something and very promiscuous and that's yeah it can be very dangerous actually um a lot of sexually transmitted diseases get crossed around that way because, um, we're not in a right mind at that time 
Okay. I'm still gonna give you credit for that though, Sydney, because you like really worked at it. And um okay. I feel <laughs> because you did that, now no one's ever gonna forget it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Right, right, everyone. No one's ever gonna forget it. That's correct. <clears throat> <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Okay, Christina. Okay. Um let's do brain four hundred. Brain. You sound so stressed. <laughs> It's going to be okay. <laughs> so the part of the brain that is responsible for impulse control, personality, and making good decisions. Is it the making good decisions? Um, is it the hippocampus? No. So that's memory. I, okay, that's memory. I mentioned it earlier. Impulse control, personality, and making good decisions. Um, <laughs> is it the front? <laughs> pre, pre, is it the Pre, prefrontal cortex? cortex it is it's the frontal lobe yes oh, the frontal lobes okay did you see sydney she was like this oh i i, I don't see her i just see she, she oh, tried yeah. she tried oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the frontal part of your brain okay. and i won't get into it because it's a long conversation but if you watch anything with addiction you know why it's important because once you start lacking dopamine if you don't have enough dopamine in the frontal part of your brain you have trouble making good decisions and those that are addicted to substances eventually your body says well if you're just going to give me free dopamine by drinking copious amounts of alcohol i'm not going to make it anymore ha 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 and then all of a sudden you have no dopamine and now you do and it's universal in the brain so mm -hmm. The frontal lobes aren't working properly this is not an excuse like oh it's okay it's okay that you um had an affair to buy cocaine or or whatnot or did this or did that or it's okay because your frontal lobe's not working it just makes it more tangible to understand what's actually happening in the brain it really does change and i could go on forever about it and i won't but just to give you that snippet so very good i have a i have a question yeah um, um, so they said something that it doesn't develop in teenagers or fully develop in teenagers. Until you're 24 to 26. Correct. Okay. Okay. That is correct. Yes. Okay. I just wanted okay. to ask that. So yeah, how does, I like... sorry, sorry. I was going to, I think I was going to ask what you were asking Sydney. How does that help like teenagers if they had an addiction? Yeah. Cause I feel like there's, I think it's been said that there's plenty of addictions that you know, begin at early age. Yes. So it's, it can cause a more, uh, potential higher propen propensity. However, it also, the younger you are, your brain needs to heal faster as well. Um, but that's usually why kids up until the time that they're about 24 act a fool <laughs> and they're impulsive and, yeah. you know, don't always think about exactly what they're doing. Not, not, not all. Um, it just depends. And that's also why, just as a side note, um, somebody with like ADHD, um, the frontal lobe is involved, might be a little bit more impulsive and say something like, um, like me, sometimes I say things and I'm like, oh, why did I say that? Oh my God. Because I, it's not an excuse. It's just sometimes you can't, ah, you can't help it. You know, when you say something and you're like, Shh, why did I say that? Imagine having a diagnosis or something that it, it's hard for you not to say it. So that is a little bit off topic, but yeah. Um, the younger brain is more susceptible to addiction because of that reason. Yes, that is absolutely true. That's a vulnerability. Good question. That's why we don't want our kids smoking marijuana. Their brain is not developed. <laughs> not that I'm saying smoke marijuana after that, but if you're going to smoke marijuana, smoke it after your frontal lobe is um, done doing what it needs to do. Otherwise, it can, it can damage parts of that brain. Okay. Uh, Christina and okay. Edwina. Okay, body for 400. Body, body, body. Okay. Medications that interact with serotonin often cause stomach upset for the first week or so. Why is this a common reason? Mm. Where's most of your serotonin? Hmm? Where's 90% of your serotonin? Uh, um, well, hold on. Let me, read, let me read the question again. I've for the first four weeks. Um, uh, maybe the uh, body is starting to adapt to the medication. That is true. Uh -huh. 
And there's another very, very important reason because um, think about where most of your serotonin is. Uh, is in the brain. And um oh I didn't teach you guys this. Okay. So 90% of your serotonin is in your gut. Oh. And 10% is actually in your brain because serotonin in your gut helps with feeling satiated when you eat. So, uh -huh. and a lot of people don't realize that. So what happens is when we give somebody that met a medication that um, it activates serotonin, it can just activate it in the brain, it activates it in the gut as well and can cause um, some GI upset and hopefully uh -huh. your body will adapt to it. That's the hope. And if it yeah. doesn't, then we have to switch you off with something that doesn't have serotonin in it, but it's good to know that 90% of your serotonin is in your gut. And that's why a lot of the time when you have mood disorders, you have stomach issues because your serotonin is not happy. Okay. With your gut. Excellent. All right. Many serotonin receptors are located in the gut. Perfect. Okay. Um, I think the guys are going to do party. Oh, no, Rosa. Sorry. Sorry, Rosa. Body for 500. Okay. And then Casey will take us home with the brain. <laughs> Where's the liver located, Rosa? Uh, upper right quadrant. Beautiful. Excellent. You guys. One pass, 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 pass. Uh, I don't really think you have a choice here. What would you like? <laughs> I, I want to pass that to Godwin. No. Sorry. No, no, I'll do it. <laughs> Go for it, Jai. You can do it, Casey. You can do it. I believe you. Yep. Our protective barrier to the brain is that separates the brain from the blood streams. And, and select. that's the blood brain barrier. Right. Yep. Excellent. Um, I'm not going to say what group did better, but um, you guys got two more right than they did. I, okay. I just told you. Um, <laughs> you guys did an excellent job. So, I mean, I know some of these questions seem like, okay, Miss Amanda, like, oh my God, this is so easy. But if you really think back to five weeks ago, do you think that you probably would have done as well as we probably would have got 50% right? No chance. Right. No, no chance. Fail. <laughs> but, but do you see, I mean, and that's why I like doing this at the end, just to kind of, again, to, to show you, you learn something. Cause it may not, some people walk away feeling like, oh, I was a little short changed. We didn't get to go to Crestwood because that's usually what we do. And I really want you to notice that you did learn something. And I don't usually keep you on here for hours and hours and hours and hours of lecture because that's not what clinical is. So it makes it really, really difficult. So it also helps reassure me that you were able to really learn something. So um, you guys really did an excellent job and I hope you feel that. Um, I appreciate you watching all the videos. I will get everything graded this weekend. I will get your evaluations done. So you'll get it by the end of the semester. Just be patient um, because I want you to actually know how well you did. And um, you guys are done done because you did your last day yesterday, right? Yep. Okay, so you have just a little bit of work today, and then um, please do the video by um, Sunday at midnight. Oh, that's when I'm going to grade it. So it might not be for a couple of days because depending on when you turn it in. Um, and let me know if you have any trouble with the video, um, and I will help you. Or if you need anything else, otherwise tomorrow is mental health, so you guys are already going to be ready because <laughs> um, it's simulation mental health. All right, cool. Any questions? Question. Regarding that uh, movie. Yes. So how are you going to write us that? Like, it's kind of a question or how that is? Oh, this is, I, I forgot to mention that. So this is practice. You guys are brand new um, in, in doing assessments as far as, you know, so basically you'll pick a patient um, in the movie and there's several different diagnoses. And then at the end, you'll just write up an assessment note. So I'm not going to be like, oh my God, that was the worst note I ever read and give you like fail you. Um, it's just practice. I just want you to practice. And I'll know if you watch the movie because I've seen it enough times. So pl please watch it. It's really, I, I know that you have a lot to do, but it's kind of a self-care thing too. And, and then you get to see it because you'll get to see things you didn't get to see as Sydney was talking in the beginning with Edwina, yeah. they got to see some cool things that they or not cool, sorry, that's not the right word, got to see some interesting things that they would not have ever got to see. 
you'll get to see a lot of things in this movie and it's even for me when i watched it, i was like oh my god wow this is they really went deep so it's a really good movie for this uh class and a good way to i think end it so enjoy cool. it um and let me know if you need any help or anything between well i mean forever you have my number um this is i'm gonna see you again we're not like ending um and i'll see you guys tomorrow all right see okay. you tomorrow okay. Okay. See you guys tomorrow. Guys tomorrow. thank you fabulous thank you excellent job thank you so much it's amanda thank you. Oh, yes are you going to Edwin, yeah? Are you going to be an instructor in second semester? Yes. I teach okay. I teach everything. Med surge, I'll probably do peds. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. See you then, then. All right. All right. Thanks, we'll guys. See you tomorrow and see you then. Tomorrow. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All Bye. right. Thank you.